Hello everyone, welcome to Collaboration Coach. It's Matt, and in this video, I've got four tips for students using Microsoft OneNote. I'm gonna show you how to use OneNote for research, how to solve maths equations, how to add rule lines and grids, and finally, how to share your notebooks with other students. So to find Researcher, you just need to go to the Insert menu at the top here, and then choose the Researcher button on the far right hand side. This brings up a panel on the right, and all you need to do is put in a keyword or words of what you're researching. When you put in the keyword and search, it will bring back, first of all, a list of topics. It's found William Shakespeare here, and then beneath there, you'll see a list of journals and websites. So locations on the internet where you can get information about your subject. If I click on this topic, it will take me through to a more detailed page about him and I'll get an overview. And then down here, I'll get a list of journals, websites and books all about the subject. So if I want to capture some of that information about William Shakespeare, I can just hit the plus button on the right hand side here and that will paste in the high level information about him. So where it's come from, first of all, from Wikipedia, a short bio and so on. So that's the high level. If I wanted to get into the detail and start to read about academic and professional opinion on William Shakespeare. To do that, I can just come back to the researcher panel, I can scroll down and I can view the search results for journals, websites and books. For example, there's a book here by the Oxford University Press. And if I wanted to go locate that and buy it, there's a couple of links there which will open up a browser, take me to it. If I wanted to have a look through journals, like articles written about Shakespeare, I can come here and there's one here and I've got some websites as well. For any journals, websites and books you find, you can also use the plus button to add the citation. So you can add that to your work or project if you need to. So quick tip on research. If you wanted to organize your pages in a hierarchy, so for example, here I've got my English page, and then I've got Shakespeare and Romeo and Juliet. It might look a bit neater and be more accessible if I had those pages in a hierarchy. So you can do that by clicking on the page you want to demote into the hierarchy. So you right click that page and then you choose make this a sub page. And that then becomes a sub page of the page above. And then you can do the same here. If I right click Romeo and Juliet, you've got Romeo and Juliet as a subpage, and then I can make it a subpage of Shakespeare. So now I've got a nice hierarchy going on. And if I want to collapse this, I can just come up to English, press on this arrow, and it will collapse the pages for me. Okay, next thing that will be helpful for students is the mass feature. So you can access the mass feature from the insert menu and hit the mass button there. And it's also in the draw menu. You hit the maths button there. Maths supports pen, so it supports drawing. If you want to capture something you've written with a pen, you can come to the draw menu, you can hit the lasso button at the top here, and then you can lasso what you wrote, which will identify it and change it into an object. And then if I want to change that into maths, I just hit the maths button. And you can see it's identified exactly what I wrote. So. I'll just close that again. And the same thing applies to typed notes. So if you haven't got a pen, that doesn't matter. You can still just type it out. So I've got X plus three equals seven. And I can hit the maths button and it will do exactly the same thing. So once you can see the equation here, it means it's identified it. Now once it's identified it, it's gonna give you a bunch of actions. So things you can do with that information. So for example, if we wanted to solve what X was, we could hit solve for X. And you can see down here, it's given me the answer to that. So X equals four. And if I wanted to, I can drag the answer out onto the page and drop it down and it will just place it nicely underneath it. Another option we have here is for the math feature to show us the steps to figure out what the equation is. So in this example, we're trying to figure out what X is. We can hit the show steps button and that will show the steps for solving a linear equation. So if we were wanting to come back to this later to use it as a revision aid, we could drag this onto the page and drop it down and it would explain to us how to, how to figure that equation out. And if you wanted to, you could also have this read to you. You could hit the button which would open the immersive reader 
and then play back what's actually written on the page. Steps for solving linear equation. Subtract 3 from both sides. X equals 7 minus 3. Subtract 3 from 7 to get 4. You get the idea. So that's really useful if you have for challenges reading. So lastly, I just wanted to show you some of the graphing features. This time I'm going to select this equation here, AX plus B equals, and hit maths. Now you can see it's identified the equation and I can choose an action. Now I've got a different set of actions here and I won't go through all of these, but I'm just going to show you the plotting because that's quite cool. This will create a plot that you can zoom in and out of and you can reset if you need to. You can also change the values of A and B here. It will change the graph. When I'm happy with the graph, I can insert it onto the page here. So if I just make a space down here, click insert on page and it will drop it into the page for me. My next tip is how to add rule lines to pages to help you to take notes and make graphs. So you find the rule lines feature on the view menu. So come up to view and choose rule lines. And you're gonna see two types of rule lines. You've got lined and you've got grid. So if I choose lined, it will turn my page into a line page, just like an exercise book. I can also choose that all pages that are created have rule lines by checking this box here. So every time I add a new page, it will have those lines there for me. I can also use the rule lines to add grids. And you can see I've got a very tight grid to a very loose grid there. Grids are useful, obviously, if you're doing maths notes, that's really helpful. And also if you're using graphs. So whether you're using a pen or just typing, this is really helpful. You may have noticed on the draw menu, you've got this shapes menu, which has three graph options there. So I can hit graph and then I can draw my graph in using the mouse. And it actually snaps to the lines as I move. So now I've got an object that I can start to make notes against. So for example, if I was using my pen to plot on this graph, that would make that nice and easy. You can also do three dimensional plot like this. So it just speeds up the process of creating graphs. The last tip is sharing. If you've done some really good research, you've done some great work, then it would be useful for you to share it with your friends. Or if you're working on something together or in a group, then you can share your notebook with them and you can all work on the same pages together at the same time. Sharing a notebook is really simple. From the top right hand corner, you're gonna see the share button pretty much wherever you are in OneNote. You just hit share and then you type in the name of the person that you wanna share with. I'm gonna share this with Megan and I can either send it to them, so that would be send them an email, or I can copy a link, which I could then put into a chat window or something like that. If I just send this to them, I'm gonna switch over to Megan's browser and we'll see what she sees. So the person you shared with is gonna see an email similar to this, where they can open the notebook, press on the open button, and it will open up the notebook, and I'm gonna to go to the school section, and here I am, I'm using this notebook. If I wanna make some changes, so if I wanted to draw some things on here, I could make those changes, and I could also obviously type things in as well. So as I'm making these changes, they're being synced up so that when everyone else that has access to the notebook opens a the notebook, they'll see exactly what I see and all the changes that I made. So now when I switch back to the OneNote app, which is logged in as another person, logged in as Matt, you can see here are the changes that have been made by Megan. And also the text changes that she made are actually tagged with an MB to show that she made them. So they're my tips for students using Microsoft OneNote. I hope they helped. If you've got any other tips, please add them in the comments below. I'd love to hear what they are. And I'll see you next time.